Learning about a complex topic like Azure Virtual Desktop is a lot easier if you can relate it to something familiar. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you everything about AVD from the beginning using something that you are all very familiar with, food. No matter if you eat at home or some fancy restaurant, you need all the same things to get a meal prepared and served to the guests. Every restaurant starts with a theme. You need a kitchen to prepare everything, people who do the cooking, chefs are gonna need recipes to cook from and a menu for the guests to pick from. And of course you need somewhere for the guests to eat and then the waiters to bring the meals out from the kitchen to the guests. And your AVD restaurant starts by picking a theme too. That's your workload, your apps, your experiences that you wanna create for your users. And those choices become the requirements for everything else that we're gonna build. How many users do you have? How many different use cases do you need to provide for? What apps or services do each use case need? So once you've made your list, now we can think about your kitchen. Each kitchen in a restaurant is set up to match the theme of your restaurant so you can prepare the right meals. And in AVD, your kitchen is your host pool. That starts by picking your pool type that'll best meet your user's needs. And the types to pick from here are pooled or personal. Pooled allows multiple users to sign into the same VM at the same time. This is generally your most cost-effective solution because multiple users share the same single VM. And that brings up the most obvious question. How many users should you put on one VM at a time? Well, the answer really depends on your theme. If you have 100 users that all need to run AutoCAD, you're gonna need some massive VMs and GPUs with a ton of CPU and RAM. And that's a completely different kind of use case than if they just need office apps with a web browser. So we wanna plan our pools to align with our use cases. The other type of pool was personal. This is kind of like giving someone their own laptop, but in the cloud. No one's going to use that VM except them. Now this could be great for developers or even people who need local admin rights. And that way their work doesn't impact anybody else across the entire pool. So for our pooled host type, it would be inside the host pool where we decide how many users can sign onto a single VM at one time. Then we have a load balancing type we have to consider, as well as how the AVD agents are going to get updated and applied to those VMs. What type of workloads that pool is gonna support? What's our network security gonna be? What kind of connectivity model do we wanna use? And to figure that stuff out in the kitchen, we need to think about our recipes. Now the recipes are a set of instructions for taking the raw food and spices and turning them into a great meal. And in AVD, your recipes are your application groups. This is where you group different combinations of apps together for your users as they need. And then you grant permission to those users so they can consume them. And the way they do that is by looking at their menu. Inside their AVD app, they'll get a bunch of icons for the things they've been entitled to, and they can just click on it to start using it, just like picking a meal. But for any of that to work in your AVD kitchen, you need to really think about your cooks. They take the recipes off the page and bring them to the plate. Now cooks can have very different styles and the ability to serve meals to your customers at different rates. And in AVD, your cooks are your session host virtual machines. And this is one of the coolest things about AVD. Your session hosts are technically not the Azure virtual machines. They're actually an agent that sits on the virtual machines and allows AVD to use it, which actually means that any VM across Azure could be a session host. Now, each one of the families of VMs that exist in Azure all have different characteristics so that you can pick the right one that's gonna fit your app's needs. If you need more computing power, you'll want the F series of VMs. Or if you need graphics acceleration, you'll want the N series. And if you need more memory, you'll probably want the E series. And if you're kind of just not sure, you're always safe to go with the D series. Now in AVD, there's actually no licensing limit per user to sign on to a VM. So in theory, if your VM was big enough, you could get those 100 users signing in all at once on a single VM, all running AutoCAD. But in general, I wouldn't recommend it because you also need to consider what happens when things go wrong. 
So if 100 is too risky and one is just not cost effective, what's really the right number? Well, this is where I like to use N plus one or N plus two. Now, if you have fewer than 100 users in a pool, I suggest having one additional VM in that pool. If you have more than 100 users, I suggest two extra VMs in the pool. Now, since you're building your VMs in the cloud, we have to think about three more things. The Windows image, the join type of the VMs, and how you want to manage them. Now, Microsoft provides images in its gallery for you to get started or you can create your own custom image directly in the cloud and even import an existing image from on-prem. Now your personal host pools can use Windows 10 or Windows 11 enterprise version, but your pooled host pools, they will need a different one. One of these Windows multi-session operating systems. Now multi-session allows multiple people to sign on to that Windows at the same time. As for your join type, you can do that with Active Directory and Intra ID. So you could be using domain join like in a traditional Active Directory environment, or you can be cloud join with no AD in sight, just directly to your Intra tenant. Or you can even do hybrid, which is a combination of both. On the management side, you can use whatever tools you're currently using to manage machines in your environment. And that could be things on-prem like Config Manager. But if you want to cloud manage, you can use Intune. Just remember that if you want to cloud manage your devices, they'll need to be hybrid or cloud joined to make it all work. And of course, you know the other major part of any restaurant is the dining room. This is where the guests sit and they talk to the wait staff, they get their menus, they place their orders. And the dining room is where the guests and the kitchen meet together, which connects the creations of the chefs with the customers. And in AVD, your dining room is the workspace. Now the workspace is the presentation layer to the users. After the users sign into their AVD clients, they'll see their workspace, which is this little bar right here. And inside that, they will have all of the apps that they have been entitled to. And then they can just click on them and start enjoying their AVD experience. Now there's one more really critical component to the success of any restaurant, the wait staff. They talk to the customers and they give them their menus, take their orders, bring them back to the cooks in the kitchen, and then bring their meals from the cooks out for the customers to enjoy. And this is the AVD cloud service. Now the service is both regionally and globally load balanced, connecting users from anywhere in the world to the closest AVD instance to them, which goes back to your pools using a reverse connection model. And here's how it works. You open your AVD client and click to sign in. You're presented with your menu of apps and desktops to pick from. When you click on one of them to open, the service will look at your pool, see what hosts are available to fulfill that request, and then the session host will make an outbound connection back to the AVD cloud service gateway. Then the service will broker that connection, presenting you with your app. And the AVD service is doing this for tons of people around the world at the same time. Now there is one more part about AVD that we need to talk about briefly, FS Logix. FS Logix is like having your own personal assistant. When you come to the restaurant, they know what you like and they know how you like it. And that gives your users a consistent dining experience. And in AVD, you create those consistent experiences with your FS Logix user profiles. When a user signs in for the first time, FS Logics will dynamically create their Windows user profile with all their personal settings and data into a profile container. That container is then stored in a virtual hard drive on an Azure Files share. And then that virtual hard drive will be dynamically attached to whichever host in the pool the user signs into, giving them a consistent, seamless experience no matter which host in the pool they land on. Now, going to a restaurant is really great, but sometimes you just don't want to go out. But you still want to have great meals at home. And you can do this in AVD too, with AVD Local, formerly known as Azure Stack HCI. This is where you can build your own hosts on-prem and use them just like AVD hosts. And thanks to Azure Arc, you get the same great experience managing your on-prem hosts as first-class Azure VM citizens, along with all of your other session hosts. And of course, at the end of every meal at the restaurant, 
somebody's got to pay the check. And now the great news is that the AVD resources of the host pool, app group, workspace, and session hosts don't have any costs at all. So in AVD, your real costs come from the VMs that are running in Azure, as well as the VMs disk and network egress. And if you're using FS Logics, those storage accounts and file shares have a cost as well. And your users to consume AVD will need a Windows E3 license or higher. But don't forget that in the cloud, you only pay for what you use. And that's where another AVD feature comes in called Autoscale. This will power on or off your VMs to reduce cost. And of course, it's always a good practice to not build more than what you need. Now that you know how all the components of AVD work together, let's go to dinner. Here in the Azure portal, search at the top for Azure Virtual Desktop. Now, the first time I take anybody through building Azure Virtual Desktop, I like to click over here and use the quick start. This is the simplest way to build your first AVD environment and still get everything that we've talked about. You just need to select your subscription and region where you want to build your AVD restaurant. Next, you just have to type in the local Windows username and password. And now you click here and invite some users to be guests in your restaurant. When you found them all, click select at the bottom and then click create. Now, while this is building, you can click right over here and download your client. You're going to need that for your testing. So just sit back for a couple minutes and then everything is built. You'll be able to click right here. This is your new host pool, and that's showing the total number of session hosts available in your pool right now. And at the left here, there are a lot of options. So for now, just take a look at your RDP properties. These are the rules around your host pool. What kind of authentication do you want to allow? How your hosts should behave? What kind of devices should be redirected into your environment? Are they allowed to use things like the clipboard, microphone, cameras, printers, disk drives? Then we have our display settings controls for the visual experience. And on the advanced tab, all of those other settings are here in text form so that you can copy them and then replicate them across any other pools that you want. Kind of like setting up your own restaurant franchise. Next, let's go back and check out the application groups. Now, every host pool will get a desktop group by default. And that lets you share the entire desktop experience with your users but you can also add remote applications. Now, remote apps are just like any other normal full desktop signing in experience, only the presentation will be just that one app and the rest of the desktop is hidden. And that's usually a more secure way to use AVD. And it also really needs fewer resources per user so you can get higher user density, which means more cost efficiency. Just give your group a name and click next. Here's where you're going to pick your apps. Now, by default, you can pick any app that's installed on the VM's start menu. You can just pick a few right here. And if your app isn't listed in the start menu, you can select the file path method and just enter the path directly to the executable. Or you can use app attach. And that's a whole nother AVD feature that allows you to treat apps like FS Logic's user profiles. They get packaged and managed outside of the VM and then attached on demand. Click next. And here's where you can change the icon for your app if you need to. Then click next and click add. And just repeat for any other apps that should be in this group. And since each app is assigned to the users or groups directly, you only need one remote app group for the entire pool, which makes management much easier. On the next tab, you assign the users to this app, just like you did the users for the pool. And on the workspace tab, we need to take a second. Now, remember the workspace is the dining room and that's where we present the apps to the users. So if we don't register the app groups with the workspace, the users won't see them on their menu. So click yes here. And this brings up a deeper point on how this all works the app groups are presenting apps that are installed on the hosts. But remember, the hosts are members of a pool. And when you register one app group with a workspace, all of the other app groups of that pool must also be registered with the same workspace. Now, the cool thing is that a workspace can span multiple pools. And what that all translates to here in your client is that they either get one title bar with all the apps under it or separate bars 
where the apps are in different areas. Click next and here on the advanced screen, this is where you enable AVD monitoring. And that's always recommended. So check the box and then pick a log analytics workspace. And generally you'll wanna use one workspace for all of your AVD resources so that your monitoring experiences are made a little bit easier. Click next. And here's where you can add some tags. Now tags are incredibly useful for organizing and managing your resources in the cloud, as well as doing some automation. And these are the tags that I generally like to use. But before you use them, give some thought to how these things should be done in your environment and create a strategy so that everybody in the organization is using the same tags. Then click create. Now just to make sure everything works, you'll wanna open your Windows client app, click here and sign in, and then you'll be presented with all the apps on your menu. And if you start here with a desktop app, you'll have to sign in. And you can see here, FS Logics is creating your user profile and then you're at your desktop. Now I'll quickly create a file here on my desktop and then sign out of my session. So now let's open this application. And in just a quick second, we're signed right back in. And if we go to like open, we can see that same file that we had on our desktop before. And there you have it, AVD made simple and downright fun. But there's a whole lot more to AVD that you need to know and that starts right over here. And happy learning.